Hey everybody, it's Dr. Osborne. Today I want to talk about why cholesterol drugs don't work. Now let me rephrase that. They do work. They do lower your cholesterol. But the whole point of taking these medications is we're trying to reduce the risk of developing heart disease, right? That's what your doctors told you. So what I'm talking about, why cholesterol drugs don't work, has nothing to do with whether they work for cholesterol lowering, but it has to do with whether or not they actually reduce your, reduce your risk for developing a cardiovascular problem. So let's dive in. So doctor prescribes cholesterol-lowering drugs. One of the side effects of lowering cholesterol with these medications is something called a CoQ10 deficiency. Now, if you don't know what CoQ10 is, it's a B vitamin-like substance. It's not a B vitamin, but it's like a B vitamin. It plays a very important role in energizing your cells and helping your cells produce energy, particularly in your muscle tissue, your liver, and your brain. So those are the three areas that tend to show the biggest problems early on with CoQ10 deficiency. Now, part of that is when you have a CoQ10 deficiency, after taking and lowering your cholesterol for years, this happens. And now we get muscle and nerve damage because CoQ10 deficiency leads to that type of problem. That's why one of the side effects of statin medications is muscle pain and nerve damage, neuropathy. It's very well established in the medical literature. I would argue, though, that when you develop muscle and nerve damage, it's going to lead to an aversion for exercise. It's also going to cause increased fatigue. But fatigue in and of itself makes you not want to exercise. But muscle pain itself creates an aversion as well. And when we don't exercise and we're damaging our muscle, we end up with weight gain and an increase in blood sugar. And that increases our risk of diabetes, which leads to diabetic medication. And unfortunately, diabetic medications like metformin are also known to cause CoQ10 deficiency. So again, we, we start here, we go around the diagram, we end up with an increased risk of diabetes for blood sugar, we end up on the medication. Now we're causing CoQ10 in two ways. Now, if we follow this back around, let's walk it right back up because and also the other thing that can happen when we don't exercise is blood pressure goes up. Now we could draw another line out here that shows when you increase blood pressure, the doctor wants to give you a blood pressure medication. And unfortunately, many blood pressure medications also cause CoQ10 deficiency. So what I'm getting at here, a central theme is that if you're on a statin to lower your cholesterol and you've been told that it's to lower your risk of developing heart disease, you really want to go back and have an intelligent conversation with your doctor about different options, predominantly diet and lifestyle, because diet and lifestyle are the biggest factors relating to reducing your risk of heart disease and no drug can match your choices and your behavior. And I would argue that many of the drugs given to reduce your risk for heart, heart disease increase your risk of heart disease in other ways. And the central theme here is CoQ10 deficiency. So again, go have that conversation with your doctor and, uh, and let's ask whether or not cholesterol lowering drugs really are right for you. This is Dr. Osborne. Hope this information is helpful for you. Make sure you hit the button below and subscribe to my videos and hit that bell. Make sure you get notifications when we have new videos coming out. Have a great day. We'll see you in the next video.